Warning, the following video contains minor spoilers from various anime series. A full list of the anime covered will be in the description below. This video also contains possibly major spoilers from the following series. Shuffle, School Days, Future Diary, When They Cry, Bakamonogatari, both seasons of Code Geass, and Madoka Magica, including the movie Madoka Magica Rebellion. Viewer discretion is advised. Anime Visor presents Visor View. This episode, Dere Dere, quite contrary. Contrary. That title worked better in my head. On a special episode of Visor View, instead of reviewing an anime, I thought I'd take the time and discuss character archetypes, specifically the quote unquote Dere character types. If you've been in the anime or manga community, for any length of time, you've probably heard a term like tsundere, and due to the popularity of a certain high school girl murder simulator, you've probably heard of the term yandere. Since I've mentioned dere types before in videos to describe characters, and the possibility I'll do it again in the future, I want to go over the major dere character types in a single video. Admittedly, a lot of this information is already all over the internet, and videos explaining the dere types in a more digestible form is nothing new either. However, in this video, I want to go a little more in-depth analyzing some of the characters that I'll feature. Because while there are countless charts and lists on the internet defining what type of dere a specific character is, not all characters fit so perfectly into a specific dere type. To start things off, I'm going to get a little educational. I know that word can be a little scary, but I'd like for this video to be informative as well as entertaining. When it comes to dere character types, there are four major ones that you'll come across and see the most while watching anime or reading manga. But before diving into those, we need to take a look at what Dere actually means. Dere is used mostly by anime and manga fans to describe popular character traits and attitudes. It's usually attributed towards female characters due to anime and manga having a large male audience, but male Dere character types certainly do exist. Dere itself is actually a slang suffix coming from the Japanese word Dere Dere, meaning being lovestruck or lovey-dovey and or sweet and affectionate. The suffix dere will become very important for us going forward as it's blended together to make a new word. It's something that's very common in Japanese as well as in English. Words like brunch, breakfast plus lunch, and spork, spoon plus fork, are a couple of good examples. You also see it in company names like Microsoft, Microcomputer plus Software, and Amtrak, America plus Track. Then there's John Madden's favorite blended word, turducken. Turkey plus duck plus chicken equals delicious. However, in Japanese, it's much more common that the first portion of the word is blended with the first portion of the other word. A good example of that would be karaoke, or how it's pronounced in Japanese, karaoke. A blending of the word kara, meaning empty, and the Japanese word for orchestra, okestora. Knowing that the dairy type names are blended words, it should be easier to understand the actual meaning of the word and the character type. So let's go ahead and get started with our first dairy type, don dairy. Don comes from the Japanese word don mari meaning silence and or be calm, or even keep one's mouth shut. And we've already covered dere, which comes from dere dere, meaning sweet and affectionate. Don dere characters are depicted as quiet and shy, only talking to their close friends and or occasionally their love interest. In most cases, throughout the story, the character becomes more and more confident and is eventually able to confess their feelings. Literally, the Don Marie becomes more dere dere, i.e. the Don becomes dere, resulting in a Don dere character. See how that works? Well-known Dandere characters include the likes of Hanada from the Naruto series, and of course Nagisa from Clan Ad. Both represent the quintessential definition of a Dandere. However, not all Dandere are looking for that special someone. Characters like Mio from Kayon, and to an extent, Umi from Love Live. Both grow and slowly become more courageous over time for their friends, rather than being fueled by any form of romance. The key part of a Dandere character is the growth that the character has. From being someone who is shy and quiet, to at least becoming someone who is confident enough to express their feelings, whatever those feelings are, whether it be love, joy, or maybe even anger. Characters growing and progressing over time is the basis for all the dere types. Well, Sundere has sort of become bastardized over the years, but more on that later. For now, let's move on and take a look at the Kudere archetype. Ku actually comes from the English word cool, written as kuru in Japanese. Cool can mean a few different things but in this case it's used to describe characters that have a calm self-control and or who are indifferent, seemingly unfriendly, or unresponsive. And of course, dere means being lovey-dovey. Kudere characters are cool, they're stoic, and a lot of times come across as apathetic or cold-hearted. 
Throughout the events of the story, the character will gradually become more caring about others and actually start to treasure the ones they have around them. The cool character becomes more lovey-dovey. The crew becomes dere, kudere, just like how we got to the word dandere. Some of the best examples of kudere characters would include Rei from Neon Genesis Evangelion and Kanade from Angel Beats. You could also throw in Saber from Fate Stay Night, though it should be mentioned it's that particular Saber, and she's not to be confused with all the other Saber class servants that inhabit the Fate series because there's a lot of them that are also referred to as Saber within their respective story. One could also argue the case for Homura from Madoka Magica to be considered a Kudere, and while that's mostly true, it's not so black and white, but I'll get to her and some other characters later in the video. Again, I want to reiterate that the progress the character makes with their emotions and feelings is what makes a Dere type character. Whether a Dandere or a Kudere, the change in their personality happens over the course of the story. However, that's not always the case for Sundere characters. Sun comes from the Japanese word sunsun, meaning marus, someone who is unhappy, angry, or ill-tempered. And as you know, dere means being love-struck. Sundere characters are harsh, blunt, and are hostile, sometimes even violent to the ones around them, but it's usually focused on their love interest. Like the other dere types covered so far, sundere characters over time start to mellow out and succumb to their feelings of being love-struck. The sunsun gradually becomes more dere dere. The sun becomes dere, sun dere, you know the drill by now. However, over time, the definition of words can change. Nowadays, a sundere can also be a character that goes back and forth between sun and dere, and are seemingly the more popular version. Well, you at least see them the most. They might be love struck one minute only in the next to be harsh and spiteful, and this goes on and on throughout the series switching in between the two modes, very rarely seeing the same meaningful progression we see from other dere types. That's not to say that a sundere that runs hot or cold between the sun and dere is not as good of a character. How a series or writer handles their character's development is more important than what type of character development it is. That can be applied to all the dairy types, really, and honestly, storytelling in general. Before moving on, let's take a look at some sundere examples. While Lum from Yurusei Yasura is credited as one of the earliest sundere, more well-known ones would include Asuka from Neon Genesis Evangelion and Taiga from Toradora, I've also seen Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z listed constantly as a sundere, which I can see, and is also a male example of a sundere I can give you. An example of a character that goes mostly back and forth, but I would consider that still has good character progression would be Rin from Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Another sundere that runs hot and cold would be Biri Biri, aka Makoto Misaka from A Certain Magical Index and A Certain Scientific Railgun. Not a terrible character, but anime-wise, she didn't have too much progression past the sister's arc and a cheeky peek at her wiki page suggests that not much has changed, but it appears there's been some progression on the light novel side. Alright, it's time to get down and bloody. It's finally time to go over yandere characters. Of course, yandere is a blended word, yan coming from yanderu, which translates to I'm sick, and can be spelled with the kanji yamai, which means disease, illness, and or ailment. Dere, as you know, comes from dere dere, meaning love struck or lovey dovey. However, unlike the other dere types, yandere characters usually start off sweet and affectionate, only for it to be later revealed that they have a sick ravenous bloodlust to harm and or kill others that would prevent them from being with their loved one. Yandere characters aren't seen as much as other dere characters, but popularity-wise are on a whole other level according to Google Trends. Though, looking at the incredible spike at the beginning of 2015, it looks like yandere simulator makes up a good portion of the popularity of the term yandere. While there were probably earlier examples, the character that gets credit for being the first Shandere as it's defined is Kaide from Shuffle. Other notable examples would include Kotonaha from School Days, and probably the most well-known Yandere, Yuno from Future Diary. I've seen Rolo from Code Geass R2 listed as a Yandere, which is slightly more unique, as he does all the stuff he does, not out of romance, but the love he has for his brother. The love and affection Yandere characters have for their loved ones is what drives them to commit such heinous acts and Yandere characters shouldn't be confused with Yangire characters, which are similar to Yandere. Yan still comes from Yanderu, but is blended together with Gire, which can mean cut, slice, or chop. In other words, the sick character, Yan, starts to chop people up. Gire. Both Yandere and Yangire have a seemingly friendly facade, but while a Yandere will murder out of love and or affection, a Yangire character's motivation for killing is, well, they feel like it. And the characters usually go pretty far off their rocker. Examples include Reina from When They Cry, Saryu Ubiquitous from Akami Ga Kill, and also Nui Harime from Kill a Kill. But it's not always so easy to classify characters into a specific type. 
Sometimes characters exhibit a mix of Deirei types, and sometimes they change Deirei types altogether. We'll start with Homura, who I mentioned earlier from Madoka Magica. When we initially meet her character, she comes across as pretty Kudere, initially being cold and stoic but slowly starts to open up. However, she wasn't always the cool and calm type. In the first timeline, she was actually shy, nervous, and quiet, i.e. more Dandere. Hell, even by the end of Rebellion, she's changed again, and a lot more in line with a Yandere. Fueled by her love for Madoka, she goes to some pretty big extremes. Keeping it with Shaft-produced anime, Senjo Gahara from the Monogatari series is a self-described Sundere, which to a degree is true, she's definitely ill-tempered at times. However, her always seemingly calm and composed presence would put her more in line with a Kudere. But let's also not forget her threats towards those who would hurt Araragi, which would make her out to be a bit more of a Yandere. Getting away from all the Yandere talk, you have characters like Kallen from Code Geass, while she's a bit of a tsundere towards Lelouch when she's working with the Order of the Black Knights, when she operates undercover at school, she plays a shy, quiet, not very talkative, not quite Dandere, but at the very least a more Damari character. And finally, you have characters that change due to specials or spin offs in a series. Nagato from the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, a Kudere, so much so it's hard to notice any affection she has towards Kyon or anybody else, but it's there in small amounts. Compare that to her appearance in The Disappearance of Nagato Yuki chan where her character is straight up Dandere. Not all characters fit into perfectly easy to find archetypes. Now there are more Dere types out there, like Hime Dere or Haji Dere, which does clear some stuff up, but they aren't nearly as popular, and honestly, at some point, you're just splitting hairs. Hopefully this video helped you understand the four major Dere types, and going forward you'll be able to identify what type of Dere a character is. Also if you're interested, down in the description I have links to my anime list for all the anime I featured in this video just in case you're interested in more information on a specific anime I covered. With that said, thanks for watching this episode of Eyes of You. Did you enjoy the video? Do you have a favorite Dere type? And if so, who is your favorite character from that type? Let me know in the comments below. You can catch previous Eyes of You episodes over here. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And remember, I'm your anime advisor, Anime Visor, helping you figure out what anime you want to watch.